This video will not give you tips about how you can work and study in Germany, but this is my personal story of how I got to where I am today. Hello everyone, it's pretty fitting to really introduce myself this time. My name is Genesia or Jen or Gene. I am 22 and a half years old and I am currently working as an automation engineer in a machine builder company in Freudenberg, Germany. Also, I am currently in my second semester in my part-time master's degree in a Fachhochschule in Hagen, taking Elektrotechnik or Electrical Engineering. So let's start from way back. I am Indonesian and for my bachelor's degree, I took mechatronics in a university in Tangerang, the city next to Jakarta. Mechatronics engineering is a mix of three fields of studies, which is the mechanical, electrical, and the programming parts of engineering. It's quite broad, but it gives me more of a choice of where I want to go next. Now, my university is closely partnered with universities in Germany and so has a dual degree program with these universities. So for my bachelor, I don't only get the degree of ST, which is Sarjana Technik, but I also get the BEng, the Bachelor of Engineering, from the Partner Fachhochschule in Germany. The requirements to get this dual degree is I have to do a one-month study in the Partner University and then do a six-month internship in Germany. So that's what I did in 2019. February 2019, I flew to Germany for the first time ever. We studied in this Fachhochschule for one month. There was an exam at the end. I passed, thank God. <laughs> then the six month internship in a company. Now let's pull back a bit more to the application period. For the internship, there were several companies that were already in close contact with my university because for example, my seniors have interned there before, but I decided that I first want to apply to other companies companies. So I kind of just googled and really just browsed through a lot. So I applied to maybe around 20 companies and I got callbacks for two of them. One is in engineering sales and dealing with solar panels and the other one is as an automation engineer doing more programming stuff. At that time, I did take subjects for programming but my programming um, sucked. <laughs> the only reason I passed is because I was always one group with like my classmate who was good at programming. And for the sales engineering job, it was in the same company that a classmate of mine, like the only other girl in my class, also got an offer from that company. So we can technically live together. The pay was actually higher than the second company. And I have a friend there. But for the programming one, I was thinking, if I don't plunge myself into the programming world in this internship, I probably will never learn how to program. Also, my manager or boss during the interview said that he and his wife had a spare room in their house and I could live there for free. So that's like a win-win where I don't need to pay for rent and I get to really firsthand experience the German culture and really practice the language. But it's a lot more out of my comfort zone. But I took it anyway. An important thing to note though, I did not lie about my programming skills. When my boss interviewed me and asked about my programming experience, I told him I know very basic C++, but I am willing to learn. And that's what Germans like, that you are willing to learn and that you're excited and you're interested in the job. That's better than saying that, oh yeah, I really totally understand it. And then when you're already in the job, you can't do anything and you don't understand. So just please be honest in your interviews. If you can't do something, just be honest and say that you don't know it, but also show that you're enthusiastic and you want to learn. So I spent six months interning in that company and I really, really learned programming from scratch. I'm super grateful that like one colleague is assigned to me and he really taught me all the basics of programming. The first couple months in the company, all I did was learn programming, learn the language because it's a new language for me, vb.net. But by the third or fourth month, they gave me a task to make a program fully on my own and at the end of my internship i have finished that program and that program is still used internally in my company up to this day so that really really made me happy and that really really opened my mind to the possibility that maybe there is an engineering job that's interesting to me because really my plan before i went to germany for the internship is that i want to go full-time modeling and make my own food business in jakarta Oh, how far that plan has strayed. <laughs> because I was just really not interested in the subjects that are in uni. But don't get me wrong, I got really good grades. I just didn't see myself being an engineer in the future, you know. So the reason I took engineering in the first place was because I found it cool and I was good at maths. 
but really I wanted to take psychology or like writing and acting to be honest in high school yeah so woo! but after this internship after plunging myself into the world of programming I found that I liked the way that I can create solutions and make people's lives easier through programs. That's the reason why I like programming. Anyway, back to the story. The six month internship was a success. I got paid 500 euros per month. Quite in the normal range for a student intern. Went on a Euro trip, as you can see in my travel videos. I went home to Jakarta for my seventh semester. We had normal classes. And in the eighth semester, we we're supposed to do a thesis. Now this thesis can be done in a company as well. Also abroad. So I asked my company where I interned in if they had a thesis project for me that I can do. There was one. I flew to Germany again in March of 2020 and I started doing my thesis. So I got paid as a VEC student, which is more than what I got, so it's kind of like minimum wage salary. As we all know, 2020 was the year that the pandemic hit worldwide. I went to the office for like the first two weeks of March and then Germany was in lockdown. I had home office for eight weeks after that, but the thesis was all good. The problem was, the lockdown caused flights to be cancelled. So I was supposed to go home in June for my thesis defense in Jakarta. Yeah, that was cancelled. Everything became online in July. So I had to extend my stay and extend my contract in Germany because I can't fly home and I can't not work here because then where will I get money, you know? But because I didn't know when I can fly home again, I was starting to think of alternatives. Okay, what if I take a master's here? But back again, I wasn't really interested in engineering until I was just randomly scrolling through uni pages and I found this one major that really interested me. It was English based, it was a really cool study program that combined psychology, design and programming. Because of that one major, I applied for a full-time master's in a university near the company because I was thinking I can study my master's full-time and I can do part-time in my company and get some money because I have to finance my own studies after I graduate. Sadly, I got rejected by this uni. I was pretty devastated. I completely changed my plans again to just going home, full-time modeling and just starting my food business. But that fateful afternoon, my boss, whose house I also lived in for the duration of my thesis, he asked me, okay, what's your plan now? And I'm like, I'm gonna go home and probably take a gap year and do whatever it is I want to do. And he's like, if you have no concrete plans at home, why don't you just make a contract? I'm like, contract? He's like, yeah, just make a contract with us. Like with the company? Yeah, like a full-time employee. I thought you said that wasn't possible because during this pandemic, the company's not doing really well and we're not allowed to take in new employees. Well, that's why I never asked him if I could be a full-time employee. Apparently, someone was going out of the company. That's why there's like one slot left. So he's like, if you want the job, you better tell me your decision quick because there's another person who's applying for the job. And I'm like, I'm in because I mean, I, I haven't graduated at that time. I haven't even done my thesis defense and I was already offered a full-time job. And that's crazy. Like, if that's not God's blessing and grace, I don't know what is. I mean, I was overjoyed, but I was also panicking because before I was just thinking of getting a student visa and now I have to get like an employee visa. Apparently, there's this thing called a blue card, which is like a special worker's permit for people who are in the STEM area of science, technology, engineering, and math, which I am. The other requirement is like X amount of salary per year and a bachelor's degree which I soon will have. So I applied for that. Long story short, I got my blue card, my full-time work contract, and then I was still looking for a master's study because transport was getting expensive when you're not a student. If you don't know, if you're a student in Germany, you get a semester ticket, which gives you free transport in the entire Bundesland that your campus is in. And I was used to that the entire like 11 months that I was here. So I urgently needed to find a master's degree so I can use the semester ticket, but it has to be part-time. The problem is part-time master's degrees 
in English were only provided by private unis and they are crazy expensive. It's like 3,000 euros per semester or something. In comparison, it's 200, 300 euros per semester for public unis. So I kind of went looking into the German courses one and I found one for Elektrotechnik or Electrical Engineering, Saturdays only. And I didn't want a full online class, so this one was present. You have to go to the campus. And because it's the same Fachhochschule as the dual degree I got for my bachelor's, the application process was so much easier for me. I applied and I got in. And it's in German and I am still fighting for it to this day. <laughs> But because of the pandemic, I still haven't actually gone to the campus till today. It's all online classes and online exams. But when the situation changes, it will be face to face again, which is what I want because I want like an actual campus experience, but also like a full time job because the salary is like a lot more than a student job. It's funny because basically the pandemic made it happen because if there was no pandemic, I would have flown home without even thinking of taking a master's or even working here. So for me, 2020 was a year of blessings in disguise. Super unexpected, super unplanned, but the best things in life are unexpected and unplanned. Moral of the story, be open to the opportunities that are thrown your way. Don't just think, ah, I have a plan, that's how my life is gonna be. No, just, just, just open up. You never know what's gonna be thrown at you. It might be better than what you initially thought. And the TLDR of how I got my job, I did an intern in the company, I went back for my thesis in the same company and then I got offered a full-time job because I wanted to further my studies and get a semester ticket. I applied for a part-time master's degree and that is my story of how I got here. <laughs> I hope that my story was useful to you to kind of show you that there are many ways that lead to Germany. <laughs> So if you have any questions regarding studying, working, living here, or if there are other things that you guys want to know more about me, drop them in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!